Hello ladies and gents, in this video we will talk about UI5 controls. A control is the basic building block for UI5. They are what we see on the screen such as a text, an input, a list, etc. So anything we see on the UI is a control. And where can we find these controls? Let's go to our browser and search for SAP UI5. And the first link is probably the SDK. Let's go in. And let's click samples here and in here we can see all the available controls and some demonstrations for example let's check one named select let's scroll down and find it here and we usually have more than one illustration let's go for the most basic one and here we see a select control for example which is kind of like a combo box but we cannot uh, type in and search and we can also illustrate some of the basic functionalities so we can disable it make it editable or non-editable for example and if we click this button here we can see the whole source code for this sample which is super super nice now let's check the API reference so I go on back and I select the API reference this time and let's search for select and I already know it's inside the M library so I search for it here it is and all controls have some common features and let's begin with uh, constructor so every control has a constructor of course if we are initializing it with JavaScript we use the new keyword and the constructor just creates and initializes a control and next we have properties and they are just properties such as the width of a control the text icon title etc they can be anything next we have aggregations and aggregations are just named children for controls for example for this select control we have the items aggregation and it's the type of UI core item and it has a cardinality of 0 to n so which means is we can have 0 or any number of items for a select control if we go back to the sample this is our select control and all the selectable items inside so called the children are the elements inside the items aggregation Next we have association and these are just the controls that are associated with our control. For example we can have a label for our select and then we can set it as an associated control. And next we have events which are just attachable events such as a press event for a link or a button or a change event as in here for a select control so this event will be fired whenever select an item here so we can attach an event handler and react to it and lastly we have methods so we can let's say attach some event handlers add some aggregations or manipulate it we have some getters and setters for setting properties etc and of course they will differ for every control now let's also check the class hierarchy for control shortly if we go all the way to the top we see that the select control extends this SAP UI core control class and this is the case for all the controls they have to extend this class and if we go into it we see that this base class provides features such as rendering so a control can render itself and its children and hiding or showing a control playing a busy indicator which marks a control visually as busy by displaying a loader on top of the control and also we are able to add some custom style classes to our controls so if we check the properties for example we see the busy property here and if we set this to true for any control UI5 is going to display a loader on our control and we also have the visible property here and if we set this to false it's not going to be displayed on the screen 
If we go one level up, we have the core element. And elements are the most basic building block for UI5, but the most important thing is they cannot render themselves. Only controls can do that. Let's take the select example. So every selectable item here is an element, but it wouldn't make any sense to render or display them just by themselves. So we render the control and then control renders the elements which are their children. And this base class for elements provide features like custom data, drag and drop config and a tooltip for example. So if we go to constructor, sorry aggregations, we can see that tooltip, it has a cardinality of 0 to 1 so we can add a single tooltip to our elements. And since controls are extending this base class as well, we can also use tooltips for our controls. Let's go one level up. We have the base managed object. And this class introduces important concepts such as properties like width, text, etc. And aggregations, as we mentioned before, which are the named children of controls. And if we go one more level, we see the event provider class and it speaks for itself. It adds attachable events for our controls. So we can attach event handlers and react to those events. For example, a press event for a button or a select event for a combo box. And if we go again one level up, we have the base object, which is the root class, so there is no more superclass here. And this class provides very basic functionalities such as metadata or a destruct method, for example, here for destroying our controls when we are done with them. So let's go back to our application now and start using controls. Let's first run our application with npm start. We open the index file and the first thing I want to do is on larger screens our application is full size and it doesn't look really good and there is a control named shell that we can use for that so let's begin with that one it's also in the M library so I will search for m.shell what this is going to do is it's going to display a letterbox basically on large screens and smaller screens it will still be displayed as full size. So let's wrap everything we have and by everything I mean just a button for now in a shell control. Now we see the constructor goes like this but in XML we don't use the new keyword of course and since M is our default namespace we can directly say shell here and as the children let's see what we can pass so we check the aggregations we see there is only one which is named app and it has a cardinality of 0 to 1 so we can have one child at most so let's go back it's the app aggregation and let's see what we can put inside so we check the type and it says core control and as we mentioned every control extends core control class so this basically means we can use any control inside but we will go with a control named amp.app the reason is it has some uh, navigation capabilities so we can add many pages to an app control and then we can have navigation in between and that's what we are going to do later on in other videos so let's use an app control as the only child for our shell and if we check aggregations of this control we see the default one which is named pages and this time it has a cardinality of 0 to n so we can add as many as we want so we say pages 
and let's see what we can add as a page and it's again the core control class so we can add anything we want but we will choose the page control and let's begin with the properties this time and we have a property named title here so let's create a page control inside our app and give it a title with the title property and let's actually use the app title from our i18 and file so it's i18 and greater sign app title and let's check the aggregations for our page control and the default one is which we are going to use it's named content and again it's the type of core control and we can add as many as we like so we add content and for now i will just take this button and put it inside as our content now if we check our application we see that it's a little bit different it's no more full width since my screen is quite large so it looks more compact and we see a page with a title named products and then inside we see our button now if i open the developer console now you see it became immediately full size because our screen is no longer very wide and if we inspect our page here let's begin with our shell so we see a shell control here here is our xml view inside we have a shell there are some nested divs we don't really care about for example a shell header and the content area inside we have an app since we didn't give it an id it's uh, randomly assigned by ui5 and inside our app we have the page and inside the page we have our button yes right here one thing i forgot to mention here is this chrome extension if you're using google chrome make sure to install this vi5 inspector and you will find that it's way easier than looking at these div tags to inspect your ui you just go here and you will see a new tab here named ui5 and now you can see your actual UI5 controls here instead of some HTML divs. So we can see our shell control inside our app, our title of our page. And you can also see our input button and list controls, which is much better. On the right hand side, you can also see the properties of our controls, aggregations, events, we have currently no listeners of course and we will talk about bindings later on so this is much more informative than the standard console okay back to video so if we check the code again we have a shell inside we have an app control inside we have a page and inside the page we have a button control now one thing to mention here if we again check the api reference you see that uh, some aggregations are marked as default, which means we can omit those tags. For example, content is the default aggregation for page, so I remove it. And pages is the default aggregation for app, I also remove it. And app is the default aggregation for shell, so I'm also removing it, it looks cleaner like this. Okay, I missed something up. This should be button. Okay, and our app still works. 
Now let's go ahead and add another control next to our button. In fact, before our button, I will add an input control. And one property for input is placeholder. Let's add a placeholder to it using our i18n file. And I will call it product name. Let's create it before we forget. And another property is width. I don't want it to be full size, so I will say 20 RAM here. And another one is max length. And let's set it to 40 characters. Now we are not going to use any aggregation here, so we can use self-closing tags, like we did with the button here. Now let's check if our input is here, and indeed we see our input as well. And under these two controls, let's add a list here. A list control has a property named header text. And we will create another text for this one. Let's call it list header. And let's call it products since it's going to be a list of products. And another one is no data text. By default, it's called no data, but we will create our custom one. And let's call it no data text. And we say no product exists. Now we are going to add some aggregations to our list. And let's see what we can add. We go to the list control. And if we check aggregations, we want the items aggregation. And here it is, and it's the default one. I'm still gonna edit this time. And let's check what we can have as an item. So it has to be of type list item base. And if I go inside, I see that I also have some subclasses of this class. Let's check what they are. So as you can see, we have many list items that we can use. And I want a simple one for now, so I'm going to go with standard list item. So I copy the name of the constructor. Let's create a list item and one of the properties it has is title. Let's say product one. Again, self-closing. This is items by the way, okay. And I will create two more. Let's call them product two and product three. Let's save. And if we open our application, now we can see a list with a header we specified and three items here. I will leave it here for this video because I don't want it to be too long. And I hope to see you in the next one.